Hello, I'm making dinner today, and I think it's like a jambalaya type thing. It might be jambalaya. But yeah, that's what I'm making. So, that's what you gotta do. Alright, first thing first, watch the vegetables. Already got that done. So now I need a cutting board. And at the same time you're doing this, you can make your broth. You either use... I like to use dried broth, so I like to put it in the water, you know, instant broth. All that mess, where I put it? I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it. There it is. That's a new one. Pretty sure I had old one. I got my pot of water. Got my bouillon cubes. Really need some chicken broth. Get this simmering, and then just drop your broth in. And while you, well, this is breaking apart and breaking down and dissolving, you can just go ahead and cut your vegetables. Oh, one sec. <laughs> Can't get it out. There you go. Jeez. Like that. There you go. In there. It's gonna start simmering. It's gonna dissolve all that mess. It's not important. Just use the broth you wanna use, whatever. Alright, so here. Here, where's my knife at? Knife. So if I remember correctly, because I did this like five times, like three times now. Just gonna try to get this. It'll peel it off. There you go. Peel off a little bit of this shallot here so I can get to the good part. Almost got it. Almost got it. Almost got it. Almost got it. Hold up. Almost got it. I don't know I got it. I don't got it. There you go. The good part. There you go. So this is the recipe of how on the off the internet. And I'm just gonna do it here. And hopefully this is actually correct. Just take off your three small slices of scallop the uh, shallot. And you know what? I like to do this. So I think multiple onions. I got red onion too. Get a thin slice of this one. Not thin slice, but like a one slice of this one. I like to do this. I like to mix up the onions. Not that way. Get yourself some white onion. Slice this off. Be careful with your fingers. Don't cut, your, don't cut yourself. It's kind of thin, but it doesn't matter. Because it's got multiple onions. Dice this up. Okay, see that correctly? Oops. Jeez. Yep, there you go. I'm going to try to dice this up a little bit. Okay, you don't need to dice up that bad, that much. That actually is good enough. That was automatically slow dice, not minced, just dice. You can put this into a bowl. So let me get a bowl off to the side. Just move that there. Set this aside. That's the first thing you need. So I'm gonna pile all the ingredients. For me, I'm using, you know, sausage because that's what you need. I'm using chicken, sausage and chicken, diced chicken. I already got pre-cut chicken, so I don't really need diced. We need dicing for today. Need some Creole seasoning, but I can't really make because Angie can't handle spicy foods because he sucks. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, oh, 
get my refrigerator things fixed. Get my refrigerator. There's nothing in here for you. There's never anything in here for you. It's always too bad. They got they got these. So they're gonna take so it's celery, onion, broth, and rice. That's what you're gonna have in this. And sausage and stuff, you know. Chicken. Dice chicken, dice all that. We're gonna get that, we're gonna get that. No. Take off that. Let's take off the little brown part. That's the only thing we need to take off. Take off the dry tips up here. Because it ain't gonna too well. And then just, you know, start dicing your darn, not dicing, but slicing your dang dang celery. You're gonna put all your vegetables together because they, they go in at the same time. Might be a little mess, but you know, it doesn't matter. You can fill it up. Hello. Right now, my ferrets are at my feet. Fighting. Ah! Ow! Get out of here! Get out of here! There goes the good. Put these in your vegetable. Bowl. That's vegetable bowl. You know, you can melt, you can melt the way. This this is a recipe basically for like two people here though, but like. Just using the, just just add just like add more if you're doing a bigger bowl for more people for the Smiths for for jambalaya. Just add more. For right now I'm using three stock celery. There you go. So I got all that in there. Put that to the side. And take out your next part of this vegetable mix for the the meal. Ding ding pepper. I know it's an easy way to cut out the, the green pepper, but you know this needs half of it. So let's rip out that center. Yeah, let's pull it out. You always get this. Here's a better idea, better tip to get the seeds out. The darn old. Bell pepper, just cut around the top, poke it inside, and then shake it up, and get all the seeds out, everything out. But right now, it's doing this. It's just easier for me to do it for some reason. And I just slice it. You're gonna dice this too. Why is this cut so thin? <laughs> what the heck? I don't have good cutting techniques, so don't don't follow my cutting technique. There you go. That should be enough because it doesn't really matter for us. I'm getting kind of lazy today. Cooking this food because I missed a blubber cake today, so you know. Spare all that off right like there. Move this off. Move this off. Just add your grilled pepper to the bowl. And if I mess the main thing up, you know, people actually make jambalaya and stuff, you know, tell me because I'm not from the South. I'm from Virginia. Not from the South. The kind of South. Don't matter. Don't matter. I move off to the side, get it back to this mess.
And now we should make our seasoning mix first. I probably should got that done first. You can get this done real fast, real easily. All off to the side. Take any container. Go to add onion powder. I'm just mixing these up. Garlic powder. Uh, if I remember correctly, I kind of forgot now. Black pepper. White pepper. Sure, we're supposed to add cayenne, but we're not adding that to the so in that so add paprika. I know that'd be easier to add. We're now on this one. And some salt. I may add a little bit more. Garlic, no, onion. But you put add onion powder, garlic powder, uh, black pepper, white pepper, and cayenne. That's all I remember. I think paprika. I'm not sure. It don't matter. Anyway, add all that together. I appreciate sure you put add herb. I'm not sure. This is why. This is how I do it. This is how I make the jambalaya for myself. Since Angie doesn't want no cayenne pepper, not nah, not today. Put that to the side, and then now you gotta pull out your meats. And since I already have my chicken cut up, so I already got my chicken cut up, so it's a okay, it's all good. So all I gotta do is cut this sausage link, this small sausage. If I can get the thing open. <laughs> I like can never have to get these things open. I got it. I got a knife. I got a knife right here. Aha! Open it up any way you want. Violently, not violently, who cares? Who cares? There you go. Right now I'm using the pork and chicken sausage. Pull off the side. I'm just gonna take off one half, like one side of it. So I guess I'll take this side off. There you go. Slice your sausage. I set up. I'm not thinking, I'm not cutting through with these all, all the way. But you know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And then you got that, put your remaining sauces away and you can use it for another time, different meal. Who cares? What do you use it for? You can just use it. You can eat it, just cook and eat it. If you want to. But that'd be a lot of sausage to eat in one day. So you wanna take your sausage and take off, put it off to the side. Like so. Get a seal bag or a sealable container. Put it away. Put my I'll put my piece it. Alright, so you got all these. So now that we got all that. You got a metal bowl here. Oop. There you go. Metal bowl. Just plop your chicken right in there. Pop your chicken right in there. So I don't need to cut it up again. It's already cut up. Because I made chicken patties. These are the tips and ends.
Uh, so now that you got your chicken in your bowl, add it a little bit, like around, not even around half, it's like barely half of your ding-dang seasoning. Or you can hold your, all your seasoning and you can make more. Because it's not that hard to make. Just throw that around. Mix it up. And now, what you gotta do now, take a pot that you have, that you rely on, since it's a smaller version for us, because we only have two people in this household. Just throw it out. Decide. You're gonna take a teaspoon of canola oil. I get up there. You go. Get a teaspoon of canola oil, or you can just eyeball it. A small amount to lace the bottom of your ding ding pot. Just pour it in. That's big enough. Remember, your oil will spread around when you start heating up your force space. Alright, so now that you have oil in your pot, your pan, whatever you're using, you should use a pot that has a lid, you know. You supposed to use a Dutch oven, but I don't have one of those. And also, I don't need that because that's way too much food for me to be making. There's only two of us in here, and ain't doing that much, so you know, stick your. That's up. You know, set it to set it to a level to sear. So I'll say like at least five, if you have numbers or anything, but medium or hot, medium high on your so whatever you think would sear. If you and now what you do, just ooh, it's basically close enough. Who cares? Let's throw your sausage in first. First thing that's going is your sausage. And brine it on both sides. You won't want the fat and the flavor from the ding dang sausage in there. So I'll just get your meat seared up in there. It's gonna take a second. Don't drain it. Take out your meat, but do not drain it. When you drain it, you lose all the flavor that's in this thing. Okay. Don't drain it, don't clean the pot, just keep it going. Alright, cool. Now that it's all covered in all the oil, it's so fine. Let it sit up, separate them all, and let it sit for a second. It's going to take a while. Alright then, you know, the tweezers. <laughs> That's crazy. It, I can't believe it takes you a whole minute to eat one Twizzler. Anyway, so now back to the video. I get quick out there. So now that your ding ding sausage is to be crisp on one side, crisp, but like, you know, brown on one side, crispy, burn, whatever. Whatever you put your boat, bro. Take it all out, take all out all that ding ding sausage. Don't drop it. Don't bring it to the The tongs are in the dirty dish, the dishwasher. Dirty. I uh, used it earlier, so now I'm going to take out. Get all that fun stuff. Nice. Sorry, I'm going to take a thing. I've never had boiled peanuts. I've never had that because I can't eat peanuts because I'm allergic. But like, is that stuff actually any good? It sounds disgusting. I know that's another southern thing. Boiled peanuts. Boiled peanuts. No. Uh, cut that out. Anyway, so now that you got that cleaned out, you want to add a little bit more oil, but add a little bit less. So you can add in your chicken. Just a little bit. They got all those juices inside the pan, add a little bit more oil. There goes for good. 
and you'll take your chicken that's been tossed around the seasoning. Just take half of the seasoning, or you can take the whole thing and add more if you wanted to. You make more. Just add that in. That's why you gotta make sure you ain't got no liquid inside your ding dang thingy. Make sure you got no liquid inside your pot, your bowl, whatever you need to add stuff. so I can follow the script or something. Alright, that's most of it. Oh, snap. Oh, yep, yeah, you gotta be careful of oil. I suggest just taking a damp paper towel, uh, towel just wiping it off. Gotta be careful of the oil that spills out. You don't want to start a fire. Alright, now. The last thing I do, I'm going to put hands in a bucket bowl. That should be good. Just another two teaspoon tablespoon of oil. Whatever you need for the size of your thing. 
And now what you do, you just kind of like throw your, that's the one. Oops, gotta be careful. Good thing I did not throw it all the way in. I'll burn myself there. Throw it here. I mean, I, I've been chopping minty garlic because, you know, some of you do. That's just a finale. Yeah, it'd be nice to have more garlic in there. You miss garlic in this, but I'm not doing much because, you know, I don't want to have too much garlic because I'm going to have the garlic powder in it. And then powder in it. Well, I'm pretty sure I also have both of green onions. I'm pretty sure there's only certain ones, though. I'm not sure. Alright, so get that cleared up a little bit. And while this is cooking, throw it in. Some of the seasoning, mix it up. This is where you put less of the last seasoning that you had that you didn't put in the chicken, you put it in here. With the vegetables. And the oil and stuff of the chicken. And sausage. So I lied. I lied. You gotta add more oil after you add this last bit of seasoning. Right there. Just half of the half of the area I had, because I like to add the last half because I add the broth and a little bit of the water. So you can boil it. I'm a huge liar. Don't listen to me. I don't even know I'm doing wrong instructions. That I got the internet. <laughs> yeah, let's mix this up. Also, people out there who don't know how to cook, you know how to cook. It's not hard. You know, you just gotta learn the do's and don'ts. Your meat gotta change colors if you're gonna want it. Eat it, you're not raw. Don't add everything. Everything you add, there's science to cooking. You don't add this to everything. You're not in a science lab just adding acid, bleach, uranium, whatever they do in the science lab. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. But cooking is a science. You don't just add things to be adding things when you think it tastes good. You add things that you know will taste good together. And if you don't know what tastes good together, just keep trying. At the end of the day, you'll find what goes together. Sometimes salty goes with sweet. Sometimes sweet goes with sweet. Sometimes salty goes with salty. Sometimes something goes with anything. You know? Don't be afraid to try something out. But don't just add things to be adding things, you know? That's what that's what the thumb to cooking in general, you know. It took me a second to figure it out. Also, don't put, you don't need to cook things and worry about it being raw or not. You don't need to cook it completely high and burn it. You need to change colors. As long as it's not the original color that it came as, unless it's steak, it should be somewhat pink on the inside to still change colors. As long as it's not the original color it came out, it, it was, when it was raw, you're fine. Like chicken. Chicken is the lightest, whitest pink. But when you cook it, it turns white. As long as you ain't got that pink in there, and it's white now, which is white meat, white meat turns white when you cook it, it should be fine. I don't know about fish though. Don't ask me about that. I don't know anything about fish. I'm sure you should get more color out of your fish when you start cooking it. Except, except for the original color we'll that. When it comes to beef, if it's red, it'll start turning brown. And if you do like your your beef kind of you know like kind of rawish like medium rare medium well you know not too well done it should be pinkish but not too red that's that's some that's some standby don't kill yourself please don't put yourself all right here's the last thing you need Probably the worst instruction video ever. This is can I try to make film alive by keeping track of where his injuries are at? That's what this video should be called. <laughs> Hear me? Yeah. I'm talking to you too. Okay. I said this video should be called Can I Try to Make Jump Alive while well, I try to keep track of where his greens were at. Yeah. Cause I'm lost. I don't know where I put it anyway. <laughs> Alright. Here's the last thing you need. You need a cup of rice. I'm going to use long grain. Rice, but I don't have long grain, you know. 
I forgot to grab it again, but you know, rice is rice. Rice works no matter what. So I got regular rice. So what you gonna do with this? You gonna make a pocket? Make, make a side. Make a side. Make a side where you can put your stuff at. You're gonna need a little bit more oil. This, this is the last bit of oil you need. Just a little bit. Make sure it's spreading around there. Okay, there it goes, spreading around there. Now that section has oil on it, just throw the rice in there. Try to let your rice grill up. Just let it crisp up. Take it a little bit. Try it a little bit, you know. It's like cat. There it is. Now they got this. Ooh, what the heck? I oil in my hand. I don't really mess with oil while you do this, so you know, don't, don't be scared. I'm right here. Don't worry about it getting the burn. Got oil fire. Get the salt. All we gotta do is right now, we'll work the towel. You'll be fine. I'm gonna smoke up the plums so there's not oil connecting the oil to the oil, you know, you're fine. Grease fires are really dangerous if you're not putting out water. Now just kind of mix this rice up a little bit, pour it up a little bit, make sure it gets crisped up a little bit. cooking, oiled up, you know. So what we want to do here, you're going to make sure that your broth, whatever broth you got, is brothed up, you know, broth ready. It's going to pour in your broth, you're going to pour in, but first, no, actually here first. It's like I like to do, I like this, to, to throw all your meat in now. All the oils and all the stuff to come off your meat. All of it, just throw all that in. Get all that flavor in there, you're not getting rid of the oils, it's the best part of that. I'm going to take your broth and pour that in there too. Do that. Try to make that more. I can do that. Do it even. Broth it up more. No, get that in there. More. There you go. All that broth should go in there now. Mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna add like at least a half cup of water. Not a half cup. One, well, yeah, a half, half a cup of water. No, one half cup. Half cup. Just so it makes sure you got enough water in there for the rice to cook. You know what? Not even a half cup. Put it in one third. Just enough. So it makes sure it got the water cooking. Not a third. A fourth. You need a fourth for water. You don't really need it. That's just a precautionary for myself. Fourth cup, and then you stir it up a little bit. Bring it to a quick boil, and then ten, and then as soon as you get it to a quick boil, simmer it. As soon as you see it bubble once, put it down and let it simmer. I'm gonna top it. That's a fast boil. So the first sign of a rolling bubble, a roi, rolling bubble. At the first sign of a rolling, at the first sign of a rolling, a rolling boil, put that thing down to the lowest of the medium. 
and just rice it for about like 10, 20 minutes. Just keep checking on it until all the rice is poofed up a little bit and your water's gone. Just gonna let it sit for here for a second and you know, wait for it to boil a little bit and then we're gonna simmer it. Further, there's another recipe I'm supposed to put in here, but I forgot what it is. I don't think I bought anything else, so yeah. Alright, now that you see, right now it's not boiling really because it's not going to boil because there's too much stuff in it, but now that you see movement in within your liquid, turn it down to your medium setting, seal it, and then momentarily mix it every now and then. No, it's actually you're supposed to let it sit. Never mind, I'm stupid. Also, I forgot to add the rest of this stuff, so I actually do have to mix it. I'm not good at this. Why well, you guys know that? But don't even have to be great at it. You just gotta be good enough. You're not supposed to actually mix it, but I gotta mix it up a little bit so I get all the seasoning in it. Make sure this all all's in it. None sit on top of each other. Like it's all in the liquid. Just let it simmer, let it sit simmer, and then come back whenever. Like within like 10 minutes, always check, see if the rice is all soaked up, all the liquid and stuff, you know. Yeah, that's it. Alright, so now it's done. It's not the best, but... Alright, now it's done. It's not the best, you know, but, you know, it's, it's done. Because, you know, while the camera was off, my front burner decided to stop midway through. So all the water didn't get... You know, cooked out. I had to move it, and you know, also not long we're gonna rest and then crisp enough, so you know. But it's it's still good. It still can eat it. The end. Have a good day. Bye.